Hello my dear students when we study coordination compounds the study of these compound is incomplete without mentioning werner's theory dear students there was a scientist alfred werner who studied about coordination compounds in detail he did lot of experiments and where he reacted cobalt chloride with ammonia molecule and in doing so he prepared so many coordination compounds he not only prepared them he studied the properties of these compounds in detail and he put forward all his studies in the form of a theory which is popularly known as werner's theory of coordination compounds my dear students you will be amazed to know that due to this reason alfred werner is known as father of coordination chemistry so now we are going to study about main postulates of werner's theory the most important point in the werner's theory is about central metal atom or ion according to werner's theory the central metal atom or ion has got two valencies one is primary valency and the other one is secondary valency now primary valency has got certain characteristics and secondary valency too have got certain characteristics so let us study them one by one so first i'll talk about primary valency primary valency of a central metal atom or ion is always ionizable and it corresponds to the oxidation state of central metal atom or ion this valency the primary valency is always satisfied by a negative ion and it is always shown by dotted lines the negative ions which are attached by a primary valency to central metal atom or ion can ionize in solution and these valencies are always non directional on the other hand if i talk about secondary valency secondary valency is non ionizable it corresponds to the coordination number of central metal atom or ion and it is satisfied by negative ions or as well as it can get satisfied by some molecules as well it is shown by thick lines and the negative ions or molecules which are attached by secondary valency to central metal atom or ion cannot ionize and these valencies are directional the last point in both primary and valency is very very important to understand dear students the directional valencies they decide the geometry and non directional valency cannot decide about the geometry not only these two important things he told about central metal atom or ion he also spoke about a very very important concept according to which certain negative ions may attach themselves through both primary and secondary valencies to central metal atoms or ion at times of need now let us study and understand all these points with the help of certain examples dear students i have mentioned here two examples one is cocl3 6nh3 and other one is cocl3 4nh3 we will talk about them one by one so first let us understand cocl3 6nh3 in this compound cobalt has got its coordination number cn is equals to 6 coordination number of cobalt is 6 which means that cobalt should form 6 directional bonds if cobalt has to form 6 directional bonds that means cobalt will have 6 secondary valencies so as with the help of formula we can see cobalt is bonded with 3 cl minus and 6 ammonia molecules so these 6 ammonia molecules will satisfy the coordination number of cobalt so these 6 ammonia molecules are bonded with the help of these secondary valencies now 3 cl which are left they are bonded to the cobalt with the help of primary valency which are ionizable and are shown by dotted lines this concept can also be understood with the help of the ionization equation of the compound 
on dissolving in water the compound ionizes to give these two ions the first ion is a positive ion where cobalt is bonded with six ammonia molecule and as a whole this is a single entity which carries tri positive and there is negative ion in the form of chloride ion and there are 3 cl minus which clearly corresponds to the structure which is made here 3 cl minus are generated that means 3 cl are bonded via primary valencies which are shown by dotted lines and six ammonia molecules they are unionizable that means six ammonia molecules are bonded via secondary valency now let's have a look on the second example as well now the second example is cc cocl3 4nh3 now since coordination number of cobalt is cobalt's coordination number is 6 that means cobalt needs to form six secondary valencies out of six four are very very clearly seen that four ammonia molecules will be bonded with the cobalt via secondary valency so here you can see four ammonia molecules forming secondary valency with the cobalt now cl 3 cl are there which are in the form of negative ions so these 3 cl definitely will be bonded via sec uh, sorry primary valency so you can see with the help of dotted lines that all 3 cl are bonded with the cobalt via primary valency clear but still the coordination number of cobalt is incomplete cobalt's coordination number is 6 out of 6 only 4 are justified that means 2 are still left in order to satisfy the gap of or the difference of 2 cobalt gets bonded with 2 cl minus not only with the secondary valency but also with the uh, not only with the primary valency but also with the secondary valency that's the reason there are 2 cl minus with which cobalt forms both the valencies secondary as well as primary secondary as well as primary now the structure can be clearly understood via this ionization equation this compound ionizes to give these two ions a positive and a negative ion the negative ion is only 1 cl minus so the structure corresponds to that only 1 cl is bonded with cobalt via primary valency which can ionize very well now the positive ion has got cobalt bonded with 2 cl and 4 ammonia four ammonia are very clearly understood that these are bonded via secondary valency so they are unionizable but we can see here that 2 cl are not only bonded with the primary valency but are also bonded with the secondary valency so these 2 cl are also non ionizable that's the reason they are written in the form of positive ion unionized with cobalt